So, welcome to sequencing. We're going to do QuickBooks 2012 Pro Edition today. This is Nick Callan. I'm an at the MVP. So, but initially, before we even start the sequencing, we will install some prerequisites. One of them is the Visual C 2008 redistributable service pack 1 with the ATL fix. This is a pretty much uh, clean install which requires no special configuration and it's pretty quick. Uh, the other part is a similar one available in the third party folder of the installation files for QuickBooks 2012. We just run the MSI and blankly it will install directly. Afterwards we'll start the sequencer. We'll choose to create a new package. We'll choose a default package. We get a report saying there's no, nothing that could interrupt our sequencing. We'll choose a standard application. We always pick custom installations, so we'll do that this time as well. We'll name our package. We'll initially initiate the monitoring mode, which will actually record all the things we're doing on this computer. So let's locate the setup files. We'll double click that one. We'll continue throughout the installation. We'll accept the license agreement. when we do sequencing we will pick the custom setup so that's what we'll do this time around we'll choose that we'll be using QuickBooks on this computer so I'm going to pause the recording just to insert the license key and proceed we'll now redirect the installation to our asset directory located on the Q drive as recommended by the AVI best practices and we'll finish up the installation as you can see, it installs uh, Adobe Flash and the Microsoft XML 4.0. Uh, if you want to keep those out and have those available on your clients, you could make the package uh, a little bit smaller, not much. Uh, obviously, you would need to install those on the sequencer before you initiate the sequencing. As a final step of the installation, we get the suggestion to help me get started providing a wizard. We'll also get the option to start QuickBooks, which we'll do right away.
once QuickBooks is started, we'll click through all the wizards. We will not proceed with the Express Start. What we will do is disable updates. So we have the options and we'll choose to click no. Yes, we will save the options and then we'll close QuickBooks and we're pretty much done. So here we get presented with all the detected applications during the install and we have the possibility to once again run them. Um, since we have already configured the application, we'll skip this step and proceed forward. And this is the installation report which informs us of things that were detected during the install and the runtime that could be potential problems while deploying this package. So obviously there were unsupported shell extensions. Uh, if those are not required, we'll can, we can simply skip them over. We have files excluded. Uh, taking a quick view at this, it seems to all relate to the actual installation and not runtime. And tons of temporary files which might not be relevant when deploying the software to a uh, brand new client. We had reboot operations as well. They they were detected and executed while moving between the steps. So hopefully they have been successfully included within the package. We'll proceed forward. We'll we'll do some cleanup uh, in this demo. I'll pretty much clear out everything apart from the actual quick view uh, application. We will remove. We'll let the sh desktop shortcut be, so when we deploy it, it will be easy to see that it's successfully there. We'll move forward. I won't do any optimization for streaming. We'll allow this package to run on any operating system. We will do some editing in the app, the editor, so therefore we won't save the package just yet. First topic is to go to the virtual file system, and we will locate... Um, configuration files within uh, common app data. So we have a, a file here that relates to licensing. So we will remove it and let it be recreated on runtime at the client. Secondly, we will create a script for the application we have. Uh, scripts. Uh, we'll simply execute a um, a service, and hopefully it won't be anything too special running it. So now we'll save the application. That's it.